Hi, welcome to this course on PDO. In this course, you will learn about PDO, that is PHP data objects, how to use them and what are the benefits of using PDO and some tips and tricks along the way. A basic understanding of HTML and CSS can be beneficial for this course. Basic knowledge of programming can also help. But I'll be explaining each and every line of PHP code, so even if you are programming for the first time in PHP, you can follow along. We'll be using MySQL as the database for our course. After learning how to use PDO, we'll be creating this web page where we can insert, delete, edit, view and search data. We'll also take a look at creating this live search where you can perform database operations without reloading the page using a little bit of JavaScript. I also have a project planned for the course. I urge you to complete the project. You'll definitely have a better understanding of working with databases using PDO. After completing this course, you'll be able to perform all basic operations on database. Now it is just a matter of practicing and writing advanced SQL queries. You'll be able to create websites with login forms, registration forms, contact form, search functionality, to-do lists, blog admin area and a lot more. Come up with your creative ideas and implement the knowledge from this course into your projects. My name is Godson and I am a web developer. I have been programming for quite a long time. I hope that this course will be helpful for you. So with that, let's get started. So what is PDO? PDO stands for PHP Data Objects. It is basically a data access abstraction layer. Now take a look at this image. We have some databases on the right and we have our PHP web application on the left. Now whenever we want to connect to the database, we do not connect to it directly. But we use PDO to connect to the database. PDO has some built-in methods which we can use to connect to a database. Now let's take a look at some of the advantages of using PDO. PDO has better security compared to the conventional PHP way of working with databases. It has prepared statements which can help you supply input values in the query separately so that you can save yourselves from SQL injection. PDO is object oriented so this will help you write clean and better code for your website. PDO has a unified API for different databases so users have to use the same built-in method to connect to different databases. PDO also supports exception handling. It has a PDO exception class. You have to set the exception attribute to the PDO object for exception to work. Here are some of the databases that are supported by PDO. In this video, we will see about the PDO process. First, we connect to the database by creating a new PDO object. Then we prepare a statement and pass in the query as an argument. Then we execute the statement. If you want to fetch all the data, then uh, you can call the fetch all method on your statement object. You can also use the fetch method to loop through each row in a loop. There are two types of placeholders in PDO. Positional placeholders where you can insert a question mark in place of the input value and then provide the actual value in the execute method as an array. The next one is named parameters where you can insert your placeholders with a colon before it. Then you can provide the actual values in the execute method as an array. So that's basically it for this video. See you in the next one. We'll be writing our code in PHP and uh, since PHP is a server-side language, we need to have some kind of server to run our PHP code. We cannot do our development and testing in a live server, so we need to have some kind of a local server for our PHP code to run. So there are a lot of tools that you can use to create a local server for PHP development. One of the tools is called XAMPP. We'll be using XAMPP in this course and there are other alternatives as well like MAMP and uh, vamp server so just go ahead and download any of these i'll be using xamp in this course so just go to this download link over here and it is available for windows linux and mac 
so go ahead and download for the OS that you are using now once you are downloaded install it on your computer and once you open your application you will see something like this so we have Apache, MySQL, FileZilla, Mercury, Tomcat and all these things installed on our computer so what you have to do right now is click on start in front of Apache and MySQL and here we can see our server has started so just click on admin in front of Apache and you can see this welcome screen of XAMPP if you see the screen that means that you have installed XAMPP correctly that's it for this video in the next video we will create our database in the last video I had shown you how to create a local server for your computer and in this video we're gonna create the database for our project but before that let me show you how to create a project in XAMPP so if you take a look at this URL over here we can see that it says localhost forward slash dashboard so this is a project in our XAMPP folder so let's go to our XAMPP folder this is where I have installed XAMPP so it is in my C drive inside the XAMPP folder so go to the path where you have installed XAMPP and in that you will find a folder called htdocs so go inside that folder and here you can find all the projects you have you may not be having so many projects but uh, you'll find a folder called dashboard that is what is displayed when we go to localhost slash dashboard so to create our new project we will go ahead and create a new folder and we will name our project user details now we have created a new project in our XAMPP called user details so if you go to our localhost slash user details we can see we have this uh, project opened over here we don't have anything inside our project so we are seeing this page over here so that's how you create a project in XAMPP now to create a database you have to go to PHP my admin so type localhost forward slash php my admin here on the left side you can find all the databases that you have we'll be creating a new database and uh, we'll click on new and uh, we'll give some name to our database so we'll just name it test db and click on create here we can see our test db database has been created now we have to create a table to store all the data We'll name our table user details you can name this anything you want and we need to have three columns in our table so just go ahead and uh, change this to three and uh, then click on go and uh, for our fields we need to have an id with a type of integer and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we will change this to primary and click on go and we'll also change this to auto increment this means that this ID will be unique and it will auto increment now the next field will be called name and we will change this to work care and uh, the length will be 100 and the next one is email and uh, the type is work care and 100 so just click on save and here we can see our table we have ID name and email so we have created our database and a table called user details inside it